we do a reaction to some of the Nations League fixtures from today. We start off with Spain dismantling Serbia 3-0. The European Championships and the European champion Spain, they are officially clinched their spots. Now with 10 points through four games, clinched their spots into the Nations League quarterfinals, um, which, yes, is now... Uh, It's uh, it, it, it's now a uh, quarterfinal the Nations League. Um, they've at a you know they've uh, enhanced the Nations League with now two teams getting out of each group and it's turned into quarterfinals. Um, but yes, Spain they have um they have claimed the place in the Nations League quarterfinal with that 3-0 win over Serbia thanks to goals from Laporte who opened up the scoring in the fifth minute um, Morata with the second goal and then Alex Banya finished it off in the 77th minute um, Pavlovic got sent off right um, in the um, in the 76th minute Immediately after Alex Pena got the third, and yeah, dominating win for the Spanish national team, um, which no real surprises in my opinion. We knew the you know the quality that Spain have, we know the ability individually that they have of their individually of their some talented talented players, and we know how they play as a unit, um, as well now under Luis de la Fuente they play some really good football. The, they for every ten shots they you know for every ten shots Serbia had one they outshot Serbia on a ratio of ten to one thirty shots for Spain to three for Serbia ten shots on target for Serbia's one so that ratio also showed in the shots on target with ten shots for Spain and one shot for Serbia sixty seven percent of the possession it was completely one sided this is a Serbian team that in my opinion had a dissonant Decent, decent, had a decent opening game in the European Championships against England, but had a pretty poor showing at the European Championship. I thought we were, they were going to be much better because on paper, they have some quality, Serbia does, um, and they have players that can play, that can play some freaking football, you know, that can pop the ball around, have a, you know, a little bit of quality here and there. Uh, they can defend decently well, but just in the major international tournaments they just don't show up they don't show the quality that i expect from them i don't see you know the player stands out like the vlaoviches the mitroviches um you know who are again nowhere to be seen in this game um they were just completely dominated um and uh, yeah if you're um uh, obviously it's a, it's a poor showing if you're a serbian fan um, as far as Spain goes, no real surprises here. Um, this Spanish national team that arguably looked like the best national team in the world right now, just based on the sheer performances, we'll discuss a little bit later Argentina and their 6-0 win over Bolivia. I just think the difference between Spain and Argentina is, you know, Spain are comp completely dominating and outclassing teams. Argentina, you know, their team that tends to rely on certain individual moments and overall a good gritty, a gritty, you know, display and being able to win ugly. And that's naturally been their, you know, their calling card under Lionel Scaloni. With Spain, they're able to completely dominate and outclass teams and create a lot of opportunities and play, you know, more appealing football more higher up the opponent's pitch football and and so you know when i think of who's the best national team right now i do have to give them you know not the i wouldn't favorite them over argentina but i really put them neck to neck because you know argentina is a team that i do you know that does deserve respect in the fact that they are defending world cup champions they've won the last two copa americas and until someone shows that they can you know topple Argentina by defeating Argentina I'm not gonna put a team ahead of them but I think Spain is just right there and uh, and also the great part about it is 
we get to see this game, Spain versus Argentina. We'll get that finalisma is set to play take place um, um, potentially in 2025. Um, maybe there's a chance it happens, uh, 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 you know, maybe 2025, maybe early 2026, which is another report I saw. Um, but, um, you know, well, it remains to be seen. I know, it, you know, it's a little bit difficult with the Nations League now coming up. And that's being expanded to adding quarterfinals, which will take a little bit more time now. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But hopefully that is a game that we get. Because, wow. Oh, it is a game that we'll get. But, you know, hopefully it's a game we get soon. Because that's really going to show us a lot um, entering this World Cup on, you know, the 2026 World Cup. Going back, though to um to this nation's league fixtures today um you know the other big game that i had my eyes on was um portugal scotland um portugal scotland which also took place today um scotland they're obviously coming off that disappointing late loss that they suffered with the winning goal from Kramaric against Croatia, Portugal on the other hand, uh, um, they had the, um, the victory over Poland, nice comfortable victory over Poland and you know and they entered with a perfect record three of three. They dropped their first points, they did it against Scotland team that is more likely than not looking like the team that will get relegated in this group. Um, and you know Scotland they had a pop around um, they defended pretty well played and made, tried to make it as tight as possible tried to make it difficult for, for Portugal but you see the play you know, you know I don't want to keep talking about Ronaldo this Ronaldo that obviously I've made it clear on what I think of Ronaldo um, but again today just didn't get really involved enough you know, you look at the players of this team, Jota, Concesa, Bruno Fernandes, Palinha, Vitinha, Nuno Mendes, Ru Ruben Diaz, Cancelo, Diego Costa, and then you see the quality that they're able to bring in off the bench. You're talking players like João Felix, Rafael Le Leal, Bernardo Silva, Ruben Neves, you know, players like Diego Dalot, you know, Francisco Tinka, uh, Trincao, who hasn't even really been that much involved with Portugal lately. Players like him on the, you know, on the bench just shows the quality that this Portuguese team have. And if, you know, if Roberto Martinez was able to get it together, they would be a dangerous outfit, but they really can't get out of their own way. They had a shocking, not a shocking Euros, but a very expected Euros, but a extremely underwhelming European Championship. And now the draw today, it, you know, it really sh tells the story for me in Portugal and how, you know, the story of them. Uh, Northern Ireland got a 5 0 win over Bulgaria. Romania, 2 1 win over Lithuania. Luxembourg, Belarus finished 1 1. Switzerland and Denmark played out an entertaining 2 2 draw. Kosovo got a 3 0 win over Cyprus. Poland and Croatia stalemate 3 3. That's the other two teams in the group when we, you know, with Scotland and Portugal. And to read off the standings, we'll just read League A. League A standings. The top two teams, keep in mind, the top two teams move on. Right now, after four games, four of the six games, Portugal sit first with 10 points in, in Group uh, 1. Croatia sits second with 7. Poland find themselves third with 4. And Scotland is last with 1 point. Keep in mind that the last place teams get relegated. Um, so Scotland really have to do have to do some work in their final two games to save themselves. Italy find themselves first place, already clinched. Um, I don't think, actually, I don't know if they mathematically clinched. They're on the verge of clinching qualification with 10 points, sitting on pretty at the top. France also looking comfortable with nine points, five points ahead of Belgium, who are in, you know, who have four points. And then Israel sitting in fourth, they're kind of get relegated. Um, Germany in League A Group 3. Germany find themselves top of that group right now, looking very, very comfortable. Kind of be in the quarterfinals. 10 points from the first four games. Um, Netherlands sitting second with five points. T 
tied with Hungary sitting third with five points. The difference between them two is a goal differential. Netherlands having plus two, two Hungary having a minus three, which is a five goal differential. Um, but the big thing about it is we will get Netherlands and Hungary match day five played at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Hungary will be a little bit more desperate in that game, needing that result because of the superior, the massive superior goal differential Netherlands have. And then Bosnia sitting bottom of that group with one point. Bosnia, they're, they kind of get relegated from there. Um, Spain, dominant so far in this group. Three wins, a draw, 10 points from the first four four games. Um, Denmark sitting second with seven points um, from four games. Uh, Serbia finishing so far third with four points from the first four games. And then Switzerland, my opinion, a real shock, shock when we based on what we've seen from them at this European Championship. Seeing themselves only with one point, you know, from these games, suffering, you know, losses to Serbia, Spain, Denmark, um, some of the, you know, and then now having the, uh, the draw, you know, their first point with that draw against Denmark. Um, honestly, it's been a really disappointing for Switzerland team that I think would build on the momentum that they had at this European Championship because not only did they get some really, really good results, but they played some fantastic football and they were amazing to watch and to sit there only with one point afterwards. I don't, you know, I was really surprised when I saw that. And now they take on a Serbian team in which they're direct the battle win to fight for, you know, potential relegation. Then they take on Spain at the end, which maybe Spain could go in there, maybe, you know, playing, resting a few guys here and there because they've probably wrapped up qualification by then. Maybe that gives Switzerland a way to save themselves. But yeah, I'm really surprised that Switzerland is sitting bottom. And, you know, as we speak right now, they're looking like the team that might get you know will get relegated in that group but i still think they have it in them to battle out of there i believe in the quality of this team and i believe in what i saw at these summers at the summers european championship